Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. What I have in my hand here is I have the Council Tool 24 inch boys axe. And this is the stock axe that they have that's less than $40 without the mask. And this axe is a great American made axe and I think it's a very underrated axe for what it costs. The one thing you have to understand with an axe like this is when you buy it, you're probably going to have to do some work to this axe to make it a good woodsman's type axe because it's not going to come razor sharp out of the box like a custom axe or a more expensive axe. And the reason for that is this is truly a hardware store type axe and they can't have axes that are razor sharp sitting on a hardware store floor where every kid that walks by and runs his finger across the blade and cuts his finger wide open. So they don't come sharp like that. But we can make it sharp like that with just a little bit of elbow grease and work. We can also tweak this thing a little bit and coat the handle with linseed oil, sand it down and coat it with linseed oil, get that to soak in really well, knock any lacquer that may be on the handle off, although I don't think these come lacquered standard, and I think that's a good thing, because a lot of axes that come lacquered on the handle, all they do is rub blisters on your hand, so you don't want that on there. But we do want to sand it down a little bit, we do want to coat it with linseed oil and get this thing really nice and protected, remove the label, things like that, and then maybe adjust the cheek just a little bit so it gets a better bite in the wood that we're cutting. And then maybe we even want to put measurement marks on the back of the axe handle to help us measure things that we're building in the woods, help us to estimate the height of a tree that we're going to fell, or to help us measure the circumference of a tree after we've cut it down. All those types of things that you would use measurement markers for up to and including self-navigation and self-mapping. So we're going to take this axe today and I'm going to show you how to make this axe a good woodsman's axe that you paid less than 50 bucks for. Even if you added a mask to it, you're still going to be pretty well right at that $50 range. And you can buy this council tool mask after market for this axe. And it's weaver leather, so it's a really good leather mask and it's only about $15 retail, I think, something like that. So let's get started on this axe today and we're going to look at how it cuts out of the box. And then when we're finished with the blade, we're going to look and see how it cuts after we've sharpened it. Stay with me. Okay, so we've got this axe locked into a vise here. And I just got a glove shoved in this vise to protect the handle from the teeth on that vise. Now, we're going to use three tools with this axe. We're going to use an axe file, and it says axe right on it. This is a Nicholson file. It's got a coarse side and a fine side on the file. I've got a carborundum propeller type sharpening implement here. And I also have one of the axe junkies pucks here. And a puck is always a good carry in the woods, but it's also good for putting a fine edge on your axe and honing your axe in once you get it where you want it sharpening wise. So what we're going to do first is we're going to work on this axe up here on the cheek just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black marker here and I'm going to come up here right on this cheek just like this. And you can see I'm not marking this area of the blade right now. Right now I'm just working on this cheek portion and I'm going down about a quarter of an inch from the actual bit and a little over a quarter of an inch back behind the bit. And what I really want to do is sweep up into that and I'll show you that here in just a second. So here's a line we've made on our axe with our black marker and we're going to take our axe file and we're going to start on the rougher side. And when we put this axe on the bevel, we only want to cut in one direction, and that's this way. So we're going to cut along that line just like this. And you can see I'm kind of sweeping up into that and curving into it 
just a little bit, just like this. And what that's doing is that is thinning this cheek out a little bit right here to give me a little bit better bite with the axe. Now you're always cutting toward the bit with this and you can put a leather protector on here if you want to just in case you were to bump into it but I'm pretty careful about the way I do this and I can feather my way up this direction and then turn around and go this direction to feather my way into the lower end of that bit. And what you're gonna see, once we get this flattened out, is you've got an area kind of exposed here where you've got a flat here, and now you've kind of come into this flat right here where the bit is. So you're kind of removing a little bit of a hump right there to give you a little bit better bite with the ass. And I'm not down here on the bit at all. I'm up right here on the cheek working that and feathering that in on both ends from the center. So I'm kind of feathering this way and feathering that way. So I'm not removing as much material right here in the center as I am on the edges or on the outer ends. And again, I'm not trying to touch the bit part of this at all really. Okay, once we've done that on both sides, now we can come back in here and you can see that line still on there that we drew on this other side. We're using that for our example side. Now what we want to do is we want to come in here and address this portion. You can see there's some really fine cut lines in here or grind marks from the factory. And now we want to address this right here, the bit itself. And what we're really looking for here is a 30 degree grind on this axe. And we can measure that with a protractor or a scale of some kind just by just taking a general scale and putting it at 30 degrees just like that and that mouth right there opening is going to be 30 degrees and right now we're at probably uh, we're pretty close to that actually when you stick it right in there so that's good so we're maintaining an angle and that's a good thing now what we're going to do is we're going to take the finer side and we're going to come in here and now we're going to remove this right at the bit And again, we're going from the center up and the center down. And we're going to get rid of all of those machining marks that are in that bit and get that thing down to nice, slick, smooth edge. You can see there's a few marks still left in it. You're talking probably a half an hour's worth of work or a little bit more to get to the point of having this thing ready to put a puck to it.
The next thing that I will do is I'll take a carbon rundum stone, one of these propellers, and start polishing this very front edge of this thing really, really well, right out the bit edge. And that's going to put a burr on the other side and we'll knock that off in just a second but we're always going from center up and center down so we're going up and then we'll turn around and we'll sweep down this direction okay when I get to this point now I'm going to go to the puck and I just use spit I don't like to use oil on stuff that I'm going to use in the field. If I use this puck in the field, I want to be able to lubricate it with water and not have to worry about oil. So now we're just maintaining the angle and going in circular motion just like that on both sides. And you'll get used to seeing where that thing is biting at. and maintaining the angle. I like being able to look down over the top of the blade when I'm using a puck. You can see how when you get the right angle it kind of bleeds that stuff over the top. That's when you know you're hitting it at the right angle. To knock off any burrs that you might have. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do here is we're going to strop the bevel of this axe. And I'm just using a leather strop that is dressed with Tormek compound. Again, I'm going away from the cutting edge with the strop where I went toward the cutting edge with the file and the puck. Now that's something to think about as well. And this will just give our edge a nice final polish, clean any burrs off of it and things like that. Give us a nice razor sharp axe. And we'll strop it quite a few times on one side and then we'll switch it over. Strop it quite a few times on the other side. Flip it back and reduce the amount of strops as we go. Alright, so in the end, you should be able to see some grind lines from the factory there, and those should all disappear on the front of the bit. You can see them in the light right there, you can see the grind lines. And those should all disappear on the front of that bit where you have reprofiled things and polished things. And now you should have a really, really sharp axe.